The experiment was reasonably simple. We took human volunteers, healthy volunteers, and exposed small patches of their skin, one or two centimetres square, to UVB uh, irradiation to give them a sunburn. And as most people know, that develops over a few hours and then peaks maybe a day later. And at the peak of the sunburn, when the skin shows these sensory abnormalities, people have a lot of tenderness to, to light touch and so forth, at uh, the peak of uh, um, the inflammatory response, we took small uh, skin biopsies, three millimeter punch biopsies fr from the skin, and then screened those for the presence of putative potential inflammatory mediators. We found that uh, a number of these mediators were dramatically upregulated in the inflamed skin at the time when uh, the skin shows all the, the sensory abnormalities, and we took those candidates and examined their biology at a mechanistic level in preclinical studies, in animal studies, to ask whether or not they, they were uh, like to be likely to be responsible for driving the sensory abnormalities that we'd seen in the human uh, samples. And one of those, uh, an inflammatory mediator of the so-called chemokine family, uh, with the unfriendly name CXCL5, this mediator was both upregulated in the human inflammatory condition and its biology uh, suggests that it, it, it accounts for uh, at least a significant proportion of the sensory abnormalities associated with uh, the sunburn condition. This mediator that we've identified, the CXCL5, that's entirely novel in this field. So. There is no literature that has previously linked CXCL5 to the generation of abnormal pain states. So that's interesting. It's, it's, it's a new pain mediator. But I think there's a more uh, general signif uh, significance, and, and that is really uh, the way, the, the approach that we used in these studies. So the traditional way of doing science, certainly this kind of science, has been to start with um, a model, a model system, usually in, in a laboratory rodent, uh, a, mo a model system of the disease state that you're interested in, and then to try and identify mechanisms that are relevant to, the, to, to creating that state. Um, and that's been done a lot in the pain field, and unfortunately, many of the mechanisms that have been identified have not translated into very effective therapies in the clinic. So the importance of this study to, to our minds really is that we've done the reverse. We've started with human pathology, an experimental model here, but we will use you know, other clinical entities, we identify mediators in the human condition, which by definition are relevant to humans, and then we do the biology preclinically. So it's a kind of reverse translation. One possibility is that a new analgesic class of drug could arise from, uh, from this particular study. But as I've said, I think the more general context is that in a variety of pathological conditions, particularly in pain states where we don't have a good understanding of the etiology, the cause of the pain, we may be, non we may be able to identify the mediators nonetheless by using a very similar approach.